Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Terraria modding tutorial series. Today we're actually going to do something that has been highly requested now uh, for quite a while. We're going to learn how to set up Visual Studio uh, so we can actually start coding our mod and set up all the IntelliSense and all of the cool tools and features and other stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to do is actually head over to the Visual Studio website over here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scroll down here and download Visual Studio Community 2022. Now, the reason for this is because previous versions of Visual Studio might have outdated packages. Now, packages are just kind of like, a, you can think of them as almost extensions or, you know, just like a, an array of tools that you can use for programming. And obviously, you want to use the most recent and updated versions of those tools. So I would definitely go ahead and download the Community 2022. That is the free version. Unless for some reason you want to get the professional or enterprise, which you probably don't want because they are very expensive. But nonetheless, once you finish downloading it, you'll probably have uh, an installer page that looks something like this. Now you can access this page at any point in time. Uh, you can see I have a previous version of Visual Studio here in 2019, but I really haven't used it in several years. So let's go ahead and take a look at the page that you will get when you first download Visual Studio. So you'll get something that looks kind of like this. Now you might be kind of confused as to what all this means, but all these packages that you're seeing right here are just toolkits and sets of tools uh, that you will need to install depending on what kind of language you're programming in and maybe what kind of thing you want to do. Uh, for Terraria, for example, or actually let's start with Unity. So Unity actually has its own package here. You can see right here, Gain Development with Unity. And this will provide you a bunch of tools and extensions that will help you develop better within Unity. And there's also just straight up game development with C++, uh, you know, things like uh, DirectX and, you know, OpenGL and other things like that. So if you're interested in doing any form of game development with C++, I would definitely just download this. But we're not using C++ for Terraria modding, we're using C Sharp. So let's go and find the ones that we're actually going to need. So we have net development, we don't need that one, but I personally use that for other things. We have a Zoor development, Python development, Node.js development, which I actually have. I have most of this installed on my laptop where I do most of my coding work. And then there is mobile development, and here we go, right here, .NET desktop development. Build WPF, Windows Forms, and console applications using C Sharp. This is absolutely one of the things that we're going to want. And I also would highly recommend, uh, you know, desktop development with C++. This is just something nice to have if you ever decide to develop other applications outside of Terraria modding. Uh, C++ is a very, very nice language and you can make some very cool things with it very, very easily. And then you're also going to want to check the Universal Windows Platform Development. You can see here, create applications for the Universal Windows Platform with C Sharp. That is exactly what we want. So make sure that these two are checked. Uh, and then I would also probably go for, let's see, what's another one that might be kind of helpful to have? These two should be the only required ones to actually start uh, developing uh, Terraria mods. And if you want to know why these are required, it is because there are certain uh, frameworks, such as the Microsoft XNA framework, uh, that you don't really have by default, and you actually have to install the uh, package and the tools that come along with it and that's what these contain right here and so that's why we're getting them but I would just check all three of these things these are the uh, the main things that you'll probably be needing and web development is also quite nice you know HTML is is, is fairly basic and anyone can pick that up uh, at any point really so you can definitely uh, check that out if you want but just know that these are the uh, main two or three that we're gonna need okay so once you have those it'll probably take a little while to install it's like uh, several gigabytes if I'm correct but once you have that all installed and you have Visual Studio up and running, you will be able to open your mod's solution file. So let's go ahead and, and I'll open mine right here. Uh, if you want to actually navigate to where that is, you'll have to go into your file explorer here and you'll go into your documents and you'll go into your games folder, wherever that is right here, into Terraria and then Tmod Loader and Mod Sources and then you'll find your mod folder here if you've created one. Now, over here, I have already have several. I have my uh, tutorial mod called Riptide Mod, and you'll notice all the files I have in here, the solution file, csproj file, all this nice stuff. When you go and create your mod in the actual Terraria uh, game application, it will create one of these folders here and most of these resources here for you. And you can open your .csproj file as well if you want inside of your uh, Visual Studio. So you can just right click and open with, and that should hopefully just open it up. And you'll notice on the side, you'll now have this window of all of your subfolders, or as they're actually called, filters. And you can open those, collapse those, and just kind of uh, check everything out. 
So once you have that all set up, you are pretty much ready to start coding. However, there are a few more things that you might want to consider uh, adding or changing before you get started. Okay, let's go ahead and find our settings real quick, uh, which should be somewhere over here. I actually haven't gone into my settings in, in quite a while. Uh, is it in project, maybe? No, or is it just in uh, extensions or tools? There it is, tools, options. And let's go ahead and scroll down and we'll take a look at, we don't need to look at our environment per se. Uh, you can actually look at these if you want. There are a ton of helpful settings and I actually highly recommend just kind of going through them and uh, seeing if there's anything that you want. But down here you'll notice something called IntelliCode and this is where you want to uh, enable this if it has not been enabled. And right here you can see C-sharp suggestions. You can put those to uh, default, disabled, enabled. I personally just have mine on default. Uh, it works perfectly fine. And if you want to go to advanced, you can also uh, change your advanced intelligence options here. I have some things for C++ that I'm not going to change right now. But uh, it's very, very helpful and it will autocomplete uh, certain types and data types as well as function parameters which is really great if you're learning because you're not going to know what those are at first. So it's great to have that tool there to help you autocomplete it for you. And here we have our text editor. Let's go under text editor in C sharp. And you definitely want to enable statement completion, auto list members, and parameter information. This is very, very important. And over here we want to enable automatic line numbers. Yes, that will show you the uh, actual line of code they're coding on the left right here. This is great because when you get an error, when you build your mod, it'll tell you the uh, line where your error is on. And then you can just go into your code and check that line out. And let's navigate down a little bit more. We have navigation bar, automatic race completion. You should definitely have that on. Uh, I mean, some people might prefer not to, but it is very nice to just type a bracket and then have it automatically type the right bracket. And that should be pretty much all. There is a few more things you can change. I definitely just recommend going through and uh, you know finding finding the things that you think are important, but definitely enabling IntelliSense and the automatic completion of you know list members and parameters, super, super important, and it's gonna save you a lot of time. Okay, and that is how you can set up your Visual Studio. Now, if we type something here, let's say public override, you can see I'm getting suggestions, and you can even scroll down over here and like hover over these and uh, press tab for autocomplete, and it really is just uh, very, very nice. You don't have to remember the exact names of everything. So now say we wanted to add another projectile to one of our weapons, you can do that by saying projectile.new projectile, and you can now even see right here, this is what IntelliSense does. It is auto-completing all of this right here, and you can say it says press tab to accept. And just like that, we can see all of the different parameters that our uh, projectile takes in. And obviously this is wrong, but it is very great to be able to like do things like this, hover over uh, a function and then see its parameters and also all of its documentation. Setting it up for the first time can be very annoying, but once you do have it set up, you won't have to go back and change anything, usually for quite a while. And one last thing that I may have missed over here, when you actually click on each of these things over here, you can see uh, over here on the right side, this might already have been checked when you installed it, but if it isn't, make sure it is. But you'll see things like the .NET Framework 4.8 development tools, which you might not need because it already comes with the 4.7.2, which should be uh, fine for what we need. And also make sure you have IntelliCode checked as well. That is very, very important. Um, and that's really all you need for Terraria modding. There's a bunch of other things that you can get that are very nice for just game development and development in general. Um, but just make sure you have IntelliCode checked, Framework checked, and development tools for .NET checked you need to make sure all those things are there. Although they should already have been checked for you when you uh, checked this whole box right here, I'm just going back here and telling you that you can individually add uh, certain modules. But that is about it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you want to support my future content as well as the game I'm currently developing called Earthward, you can do so by becoming a Patreon with the link in the description, or you can just join the Discord and uh, check out all the cool stuff that people are making in there. And if you ever need help or you want to access the GitHub which contains the resources of the mod that you're looking at right here, the Riptide mod, you can do so by just checking out the links in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.